welcome to Edison Open House Global Healthcare 2022. In this session, we're going to highlight the work of Cantagia, a Swedish listed biotech which specializes in cancer, autoimmune and inflammatory disease. I'm delighted to, join, uh, to be joined by its CEO, Goran Fossenberg. Goran, how nice to see you again. Good to see you again, Vivian. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, not all of our viewers may be familiar with this area. So can you just explain to start us off how cancer, autoimmune and inflammatory disorders are all linked together? It's, it's a great question and it's a question I get quite often. So what, what the immune system is really here to protect us against uh, infections and, and other sorts of problems. And... Uh, the, the cancer can actually take that system and hijack it to, to protect itself. So basically causing an environment where the normal immune system is inactive, but there is some kind of separate mechanisms ongoing, like during an infection. Uh, the same goes for autoimmune inflammatory diseases where the same systems can be activated, but here we are completely dysregulated to actually cause and promote a disease. So there is clear links through, let's say, the very high complexity of our immune system. Now, there's been a lot of activity in the lung cancer field in particular recently with immunotherapy. And some investors may have been spooked by the recent negative trial results with Novartis's antibody, can can you live? How is CANO4, which is uh, your uh, asset different? Yeah, so, so the, the Novartis antibody canakinumab blocks one of the IL-1 forms called IL-1 beta, uh, and that's uh, an inflammatory cytokine uh, which is circulating uh, in the body. But uh, IL-1 beta is not the only IL-1 component. There is one component called IL-1 alpha as well, which is just as important when it comes to a cancer context. So by blocking only IL-1 beta, Novartis has shown that in very early stages of lung cancer, there is a, a clear benefit of uh, inhibiting that molecule. But I think the conclusion is that the trials Novartis have done so far is that by blocking IL-1 beta only, you don't really solve a problem. And our idea is to combine uh, blocking of both forms of IL-1, so you really, really shut down that inflammatory signal by blocking both IL-1 alpha and IL-1 beta. And then uh, CANO4 has a second mechanism as well, which is really what we call ADCC, which is uh, activation of immune cells to eradicate can cancer cells that uh, are, let's say, found to be susceptible to CANO4. So we have a much broader mechanism of action and a much more differentiated mechanism of action. And our clinical data so far is really indicating uh, good efficacy. So you've got this double action and back in September, you presented the results uh, compare, uh, combining uh, CANO4 with uh, first line chemotherapy in patients with either pancreatic or lung cancer, both of course, heart sink cancers in terms of their survival rates. And the results indicated a synergistic anti-tumor effect. Can you elaborate a bit on those results and what they mean? Absolutely. So, so uh, let, let's start with the lung cancer results. So they are relatively straightforward to digest. So when you treat patients with chemotherapy alone, you expect uh, a smaller number of patients in the order of 20, 25%. To, to get the tumor shrinkage, which is big enough to be called a response. Uh, when we add CANO4, uh, we've seen in preclinical models that the responses get much, get much more pronounced. And uh, in the patients, we've been in the range above 50%, so which is a cl clear difference. And uh, we also see that in the limited material we have so far, that the response seems to be durable with the progression-free survival, which is above seven months. So all, all this is very, very good and uh, much better than you would expect from chemotherapy alone. That's why we call it synergistic effect. When it comes to pancreatic cancer, uh, patients are doing very well, but they are doing well 
in a more complex uh, set. So some of them respond and some get some, what we call some kind of delayed response or pseudo progression. Uh, but nevertheless, what in the end of the day, these patients have a much longer survival than you would expect from chemotherapy alone. So we recorded a median survival uh, above one year, while the expectancy from chemotherapy alone would be somewhere around nine months. So again, uh, much an, an improvement to, to historical control data. But uh, we have about 30 patients in each indication. Obviously, we need much more patients. But if these tr trends uh, hold true, we, it's certainly going to be uh, a very exciting future for us. That does sound really exciting, especially in such difficult therapy areas. Now, you've uh, expanded what I, as we should probably call by its uh, antibody name, uh, CANO4, but nadunolumab. Uh, how do you pronounce it, Goran? <laughs> Nadunolumab, but uh, it, it's it's an international name, so we can re probably pronounce it anyway. So we're, we we're saying that because there is no shame in getting this name wrong. Cano four is probably easier for everyone, but yeah. you've expanded its R and D uh, uh, pipeline substantially this year. How would you summarize your R and D strategy? Yeah, so. so but basically, we believe that both from preclinical experiments as well as from uh, the clinical data I just referred to in pancreatic and non-small cell lung cancer, that we have a synergy between uh, CANO4 and chemotherapy. And we really like to build on that knowledge uh, to identify which cancer forms and which chemotherapies uh, do we have the best effects in or within. And, and so therefore, we're now starting new trials where we include other big cancer forms like colorectal cancer, breast cancer, uh, and a subform called triple negative breast cancer, as well as some more niche indications like biliary tract cancers and uh, head and neck cancer. Uh, then uh, we're also broadening uh, the type of chemotherapies uh, uh, to, to not only gemcitabine or braxane, which is studied in pancreatic cancer and gemcitabine cisplatin, but other forms of platinum-based chemotherapy or taxane-based chemotherapy. And those trials have just started to recruit. So obviously it's going to take some time before we have uh, any meaningful results, but it's very, very exciting. But at the same time, as we're broadening our development efforts, we are also, let's say, continue to advance uh, our efforts in pancreatic cancer and non-small cell lung cancer. So we have quite a lot of uh, on our plate right now, but uh, we are well equipped and have a great team to deliver on this. So what data should we expect and, and when? So in the very near future, uh, very, very, or let's say during the first half uh, of 22, uh, there will be updates of, of, of the clinical data we've seen in pancreatic cancer. And there will also be new data sets as we have uh, continued to recruit more patients. So hope. So the idea is really to give a more solid base for, for what we're doing in those two indications. And later on during 22, there will probably be the first data sets in, in the other cancer forms that we're looking into. But given that we are such an early stage, it's a bit difficult to guide exactly uh, when the results will be mature enough to present. Now let's go to the other side of your portfolio, which is autoimmune diseases, where the immune system has gone into overdrive and started attacking various bits of the body uh, itself. And you've got a second asset, CAN10. Um, how does this fit into your plans? And are you, how comfortable are you with developing assets which are outside your, your, the usual well-trodden paths of oncology? So, so can, can O4 and CAN10 are obviously developed in, in very different diseases, uh, which to some extent means that we need to have, let's say, specialized teams for, for both uh, indications. But there is also a synergy between those two projects as they are directed against the same type of inflammatory systems. But CAN4 is then designed for cancer therapy, while CAN10 is more designed for treatment of autoimmune inflammatory diseases. 
but we're, we are going to learn so much between these two different programs that we can take advantage of in, in respective uh, development. So I really look forward to getting Canton in, into the clinic and I'm sure we can handle this. It sounds like you've got an incredibly exciting uh, year ahead. Goran, it's such a pleasure always talking to you and I wish you every success for 2022. Well, thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to be here as well.